First question from Kirsten Watson, go ahead. Thank you. Hi, Dave. Hope you're well. First and just foremost, how was photo day? Uh, photo day was actually uh, a lot more efficient um, than normally. Than normal, we uh, had a lot less uh, photographers out there, uh, given the circumstances. Starting today a little bit later was a lot uh, warmer, and uh, we got through it. So it was nice seeing everyone in their home whites. Did you take a photo with the selfie camera by any chance? So I didn't get to that selfie camera station. So yeah, they uh, left me out of that one. <laughs> That's okay. Now, earlier, Cody Bellinger mentioned that he'll be ready for opening day. I know you had agreed with the, with that message. Have you been able to see him just yet? And if so, what are your thoughts? So uh, I have seen him and uh, his body is just really in a good place right now from the core to the, to the shoulder to the lower half. Um, he's in a great headspace. Rehab as far as the shoulder. Every day it's getting better. Uh, he's on a great program with our guys. Uh, hasn't taken swings on a field yet. Um, stood in on some live pitching today, but he's on track. Thank you. Next question is from Juan Toribio. Go ahead. Hey, Dave, with Cody, do you see him playing first base at all? Is it strictly outfield? How do you kind of see that playing out? Yeah, I, I see center field. Um, you know, I can see him throughout the spring just taking ground balls at first base, um, you know, just to keep his feet moving, just to stay familiar with first base. But um, that's a position that, that comes very natural to him. So uh, I don't know as far as how much playing time at first base, but certainly he'll be taking grounders there, you know, from time to time. And we saw you kind of looking at uh, Josiah Gray's um, live BP today. What do you think of him? Really good. Uh, Josiah, obviously the fastball is real. Um, he uh, synced up some really good breaking balls and then the changeup is, is a plus pitch as well. So I thought today facing hitters, really good. You think he can kind of be another option for you guys if, if everything moves forward? Not Maybe not at the start of the season, but at some point during the season? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to play out, but uh, certainly we think a lot of him, and um, he just needs to continue to get repetitions, continue to develop. You know, I think spring training, facing major league hitters, um, but he, he's coming pretty quickly. Thanks, Dave. Next question from Dave Vasse. Go ahead, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. I was uh, curious, you know, what you saw from Dustin May today um, and, and what you believe he needs to do to maybe miss more bats this season and, and what the progression is in spring to try to accomplish that. Well, uh, I didn't see him. Uh, I heard uh, he touched 101 today, so that's certainly a good thing. Um, I, I think as far as your question, missing bats, I think just continuing to develop the breaking ball, um, develop the change up which uh, both those pitches, I think he's getting more feel for and just sequencing the right way. And that'll accomplish that. Another one of your young players, Gavin Lux. I haven't really, we haven't asked you about him. Just have you had a chance to talk to him one-on-one -on -one this spring? What, what are you looking to see from him to show you that he's ready to maybe take a larger role on the team? Well, I, I, I just think that this year for Gavin, um, just getting a normal, uh, progression, uh, routine, um, how spring training, we hope it plays out as far as him not missing significant time that he missed last year. And also last year we had the start stop. Um, so I think that for me, it's just Gavin just to be himself and go out there and play baseball. You've been so good at giving young players longer runways than most. Are, are you looking at the results in spring training or are you looking at the at-bat quality more? Uh, at that quality, um, just kind of seeing how young players handle themselves with success, uh, the day to day uh, interaction with coaches, teammates um, in in games. Um, and uh, yeah, we've given a lot of young players runways. And I think that that's led to, you know, the consistent reload, the depth that we do have. Thanks, Dave. You got it. Next question is from Ron Kavner. Go ahead, Ron. Hi, Dave. Um, we had talked to Zach McKinstry a little bit earlier today, and I'm just kind of curious, do you see him being able to kind of fill that sort of Kike like utility role this season or at least have the chance to do so? Well, we're going to give him opportunities. There's a lot to like with Zach. Um, so he's a guy that 
can play all over the diamond. Um, Kike was a special player, but uh, Zach certainly um, can do a lot of those same things. And um, and being having a left-handed bat certainly is a good thing as well. So, yeah, I, I just think for us, I think Zach's one of those guys, the more you see, the more you like him. He's going to get plenty of opportunities. Thanks. Next question from Jorge Castillo. Go ahead. Hi, Dave. Um, are Mitch White and Joe Kelly still down? So uh, Joe is uh, resumed his throwing program, and uh, I think he's out to about 90 feet, maybe 120, throwing in consecutive days. Uh, Mitch White still not uh, hasn't picked up a baseball yet. And just um, last year, where we're in the moment, a lot of people were wondering how you know the cancellation of the minor league season would impact a, a minor league's development, a prospect's development. Um, it might be too early to, to say, but what are you guys thinking in terms of, of that? Do you think guys took a step back? Do you think it could have been helpful not had playing games and doing what you guys did? Like, is there any sort of theory yet? Well, I, I don't know how it's going to ultimately play out, but I certainly believe that it wasn't a good thing as far as development, you know, not being able to play 140 plus games uh, in a minor league season. Uh, but I do think that us in particular did a great job of getting – uh, guys to the alternate side, there was an instructional league, getting guys here early, uh, certain guys that might not have been in big league camp, getting them around our big leaguers to get more repetition. So, um, yeah, but we'll know more, you know, as the season progresses. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Next question from Bill Plunkett. Go ahead, Bill. Backtracking a little bit, Dave, uh, to Rowan's question. Do you feel that you're looking for someone to replace Kike or is it a, you know, it takes a village kind of thing? Well, he's a, he's certainly a hard guy to replace uh, because he could do so many things and uh, understood the, the various roles that we had him in and certainly thrived. Um, it's a different, it's the same, a lot of the same pieces, um, but having a guy like Chris Taylor, Taylor still kind of as a holdover is, is paramount. Um, so I don't necessarily, doesn't necessarily need to be that same, um, Kike exactly what he did for us. And the, uh, the other part that you lost, Jock Peterson, do you anticipate, uh, less platooning in the outfield, obviously because of the makeup does AJ become an everyday guy? Um, yeah, well, the thing is that I expect AJ who's always hit righties, lefties, um, to be on left field, I know Chris Taylor does the same thing, so he's going to need his at-bats. Um, then you kind of layer in uh, Matt Beatty getting some repetitions of at-bats in left field, uh, which I feel really good about. So, um, you know, Jock is a hard guy to replace, but uh, I think it, it's going to be, a, as we talked about, Bill, a high-class problem to make sure that these talented players get those at-bats out there. Thank you. Yep. Got time for one more. Go ahead, Clint. Hey, Dave. How's it going, man? Uh, I was just kind of curious. Um, what are you expecting or what are you hoping to see out of uh, Chris Taylor this spring, particularly defensively? Are you going to see uh, maybe emergency center field a little bit? Uh, just kind of where will he be playing around? Yeah, I, I see Chris at second base. I see him a little bit at short. We know he can play short. Um, I, I see him in center field uh, a little bit. I see him in left field and I also see him at third base. Um, you know, like right now you're looking at the roster and Justin and you've got two left-handed bats and, and Eddie Rios and um, Matt Beatty. But I also like Chris taking grounders over there and uh, getting familiar more with third base too. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys.